Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. This week we fetched poo. Cake, say. Fetch poo. No, this cake for me, cake for me. As a belief, cake smile. This week we are fetching poo. Which poo? Is fetching poo. <laughs> for the compost. For the compost. Yay! Hey, Minnie. You're impossible. Behind us, Nene. He's gonna walk behind us. Look out the window, Nene. What poo was that? Quickly show the camera, take the camera and show. Okay, no, that was zebra. Zebra, zebra poo, yeah. Here for me. And what we're doing, guys, what we're doing is we're just going around and we're collecting all sorts of poo what? for the garden. Not because I want the poo, but because I want the micronutrients or the micro, sorry, the microbes, all the good hoppers. Say microorganisms, Yvonne. Microorganisms. Nay, nay, what are you doing? Are you getting some poo for daddy? And here's the cow manure that we're collecting. One for just for the, the nutrient, but also we after the micro for the nutrient to sort of reinvigorate the compost. Afternoon everyone. Um, yeah, it's it's been a while. I've I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. Um, if you've been following my Instagram, I'm busy with a permaculture course and then there's a few things that have joined in. Um, so I've, I've been really busy. Um, okay, so I've been, been recording a lot with the kids and we've been busy. <laughs> um, it's almost time to do another monthly update on what's been happening in the garden. What I wanted to do today was sort of explain our composting system um, and I thought I'd break it up into two bits. I do two very distinct composting techniques is what's often referred to as lazy composting or long-term composting or cold composting but it's basically you just collect matter and you leave it for months and it decomposes in situ you just add to it and now and again you might mix it and yeah that's pretty much that's what my mum used to do she used to have a um, <laughs> for those of you that know my mum she had a massive um, botanical garden and then she had a huge vegetable garden as well um, and her compost was just a big hole and whatever scraps was there would go into the hole and you just throw it in and then you take from this side of the hole and then that side of the hole depending if we need compost or not um, my system's working a little bit different I'm using both um, so this this location is just as much of the material that I can get as possible and I'm not really concerned about that nitrogen to carbon ratio that I spoke about in that that original composting video this one is purely whatever material I can get I put it here and I think we just so this grass doesn't mat up we'll mix it in yeah I just quickly wanted to show you where we get our leaves from. So this is a pile that we, in in the last winter, that we would have collected, we just dump it here. Um, and then when the rains come, you can start seeing it, it brings the moisture, sorry, pardon the lawnmower, um, and it starts to decompose here. So this is, we leave this, and we'll just come and collect from here. We went out to the kids now, I went looking for elephant dung, um, and that's what I've got here. We, we're looking for cow dung, and whatever else dung we can get because in a system like this especially in my system what's vital to it is 
um, the impact of microbial life. And I would have chatted, you would have seen I've chatted with Tian about it. Um, how a plant takes in its nutrients is, is really amazing. Um, because if you think about it, if this was the ends of the roots or the hair roots and your nutrients and there's all grains of sand and soil here and the nutrient that it wants is over here. How, even if osmosis should occur, how does that nutrient get from here to the root? And so it's fascinating that the, that the plants entice bacteria. Hello everyone, I'm just quickly going to jump in here. I just want to clarify when I say bacteria, I'm referring to microbial life and all its diversity. To the end, edge of the root, because outside of each root, there's a film, thin film of water. And through the process of photosynthesis, the plant turns light basically into energy. And what that energy is, is carbs and sugars. And from what I've read, up to 35 to 40% of all carbs and sugars that plants create ends up on the outside of these roots. And those sugars is what attracts bacteria. Now what's in that sugary, watery mixture is a very distinct chemical signature that attracts specific bacteria. Um, that Now you also have to understand that bacteria, whatever elements there are or nutrients in the ground, be it nitrogen, boron, um, nickel, iron, all these sorts of things, there's bacteria that feed on specific ones of these elements. And so the bacteria goes and eats um, boron or nickel or iron or whatever and then all bacteria like sugar water. So what happens is the bacteria will grab the stuff and then be drawn towards it. So you'll have this concentration of bacteria looking for that water with that very distinct chemical signature. So you'll have this high concentration along here and, and these bacteria will defecate, die, break down. So you'll find that outside the root whatever that nutrient the plant is looking for will start to become quite prevalent outside the root and that's when that process of osmosis from a high sol density solution to a low density occurs. And that's very very special on why and once I understand that then you understand you need a diversity of bacteria in your soil because you might have you might take a supplement um, get rock dust for instance um, which is basalt or gabbro dust rocks that are crushed really really fine and they have a wealth of micro elements and micro minerals but you can put that on your ground but if you don't have the bacteria that breaks that down to bring it to the plant there's almost no point um, and that's so you really want a diversity of bacteria within your compost and within your system and the best way to do that is, I think what we should do is we should be having compost clubs and people should meet and trade compost because then we're trading that mac micro, and you don't need a lot, just a little bit and you put it into your, into your compost and you're, you're activated with that type of bacteria. Um, animal dung, that especially things like elephants that move great distances, I think their dung should be incorporated into compost. Again, not huge values, you don't want to take nutrients away from a natural system, but if you take one ball of elephant dung and chuck it into your compost every month or so, you'll, you'll impregnate that, that compost with a wealth of micro elements and, oh, sorry, microbacteria and things like that, that diversity. Um, I think that is incredibly important. Um, so, and that's what we've been encouraging with, with our garden now. Um, we, yeah. I cannot stress that importance is enough. Anyway, let's get this dung on here. Like I said, you don't need a gym membership if you've got a garden. You, my previous life, if you knew me as a guide, you would have understood my absolute fascination with these guys. Dung beetles. It is such a critical part of cycling nutrients and I think 
If you understand the life cycle of this animal, you'll understand how nutrient cycling works. Okay guys, so this is the long composting. We'll just keep adding to it, taking from it. So once, at this stage we're doing it, geez, we're taking compost from here almost every three to four days. Um, the chickens are really effective at turning that compost, taking big chunks and turning it into finer material. Um, so we're getting the compost through quite quickly, which is nice because uh, my soil still needs a lot of work. Um, but the next process, which will be the next video, is where I start to discuss how we, how we take this, what our Dima raw material. This is the lazy composting, we're just adding to it and then we're moving it across. Um, the work starts in, in the chicken coop. Um, that'll be the next video. Good morning everyone. Um, next day, <laughs> um, I just needed to provide some clarity quickly on what I meant by bacteria and the microbial life that will be, be nurturing in our, in our compost. Um, basically, if you look at a plant succession, if you've got a, a bare patch of soil, um, your first little pioneer plants will start coming in. Um, opportunistic plants, most people refer to them as weeds, um, will start coming in and as they decompose and eventually die and decompose, um, that's sort of the first introduction of organic matter into the soil. The things that break them down at that point would be mostly bacteria. Um, so in, in that early part of, of a plant or an ecosystem succession, it would be bacterial dominant. And as more nutrients start getting cycling, you'll find that your more fungis will start coming through, um, your mycorrhizal fungis. So when you reach your um, climax, where it's mostly woody species, you'll find that the, 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 the ecosystem will be predominantly uh, fungal rich. Not to say that there is no bacteria there, and then in the early parts of the succession there would also be fungi. It's just the dynamic changes a bit. So you, if you, for example, where that contextually, where that comes becomes relevant, for example, in a garden like this, um, or a vegetable garden, if you, in your orchard, if you've got your fruit tree orchard, which is predominantly a woody system, because it's trees, you want to encourage um, fungal rich, compost in that sort of system and but what I'm growing at the moment is a lot of annual vegetables um, so in my system I want a bacterial rich compost and so that that's sort of why I was harping on the bacteria the bacteria bacteria but contextually um, in the soil you'll have both fungi and bacteria and both serve the same role as I explained in the video um, in a climax forest or a, a fruit tree orchard, that same interaction that's uh, trading happens where the, the plant provides um, carbs and sugars to the soil and then your mycorrhizal fungi which will have a multitude of um, connections throughout the soil will draw those nutrients from other places in the soil and bring it towards the tree because it's attracted to the sugars and the carbs but it will bring the minerals that the tree requires based on that distinct chemical signature so that that process still applies to a fungi a mycorrhizal fungi system um, as it does to bacteria so there's there's no difference there hope that clarifies it I just I felt that I needed to put that in um, yeah if you like this video um, like I said the next part will be focusing the composting in the garden um, where we'll show you what we'll do with this pile and what the process is in the in the in the kitchen uh, in the kitchen coop I should just call it the kitchen coop the composting coop um, where we bring this in and we start to amend it with certain things so by the time it comes out we've got really rich compost so that that will be the next version of the composting I might do a garden update in between because there's so much has happened recently yeah, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share it with your family and friends. Um, and if you've got any questions, welcome to bomb that to me in any way that you might be connected with me. Or just drop it in the comments below. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Cheers. Bye.